This video is one of those videos that I never thought I would actually make. Uh, what I'm going to show you today is the ultimate mobile Dolby Atmos production workflow. We are going to be fully immersive. We're going to use head tracking for immersion and we are doing it on Windows in a stereo digital audio workstation. How cool is that? So let's get started. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I'm a digital media educator with more than 30 years of experience in higher education. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design, and spatial audio. If any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. In that link is in the description below. Or you can also use the QR code that is either here or here. Before I get started, a couple of disclaimers. First of all, some of the software that I'm going to use today I received for free in the form of evaluation licenses or pre-release licenses. However, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody had any influence on what I'm going to say. Everything that I'm going to talk about is strictly my own opinion. And second, this is sort of a continuation of last week's video where I showed a similar setup for the Mac operating system. And back then I said that I would do another video for Windows specifically, and this is the video today. However, in order to keep things interesting, I decided to spice it up a little. So in addition to this Windows setup, I'm going to answer a couple of questions that you guys had, and I'm going to answer a couple of concerns, uh, make a few corrections to what I did before, and we're even going to use Reaper today. So there's a little bit of everything for everybody. And with that being said, let's hop into our Ableton project. Now, the project that I'm going to use today is a little bit different to what I normally do. Uh, what I decided to do is use a couple of uh, really very well-made samples from a sample producer who specializes on producing STEM-based samples for game design and uh, film and video production. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. The producer is called Duende Sounds. I really like the stuff that uh, he or she is doing. Um, I'm not sponsored, by the way. I paid for those samples myself, but check them out. They're really, really nice. So let's have a listen on what we have here. So this is essentially a very simple background piece and it consists of a drum loop. And then we have uh, two drones. They are very similar, so we're going to use them in our Atmos project as, a, as, as something that we hear in the foreground and something that we hear in the background. So this is the second one. There's a slight difference, but they're very, very similar. And then we have uh, one synth that is sort of kind of a tick-tocky, a, a clingy, a clocky kind of thing. And then the uh, final synth that gives the whole thing a little bit of a melodic touch. And together, I think this sounds really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn that project into a Dolby Atmos project. But before I do that, I'd like to briefly answer one question that I get quite frequently, and that is, why do we even bother with Dolby Atmos? Isn't this just a fad that will go away, like 3D movies went away? And my answer to that question is that uh, this might very well be. We have no clue what the long-term perspective is. However, we can already anticipate that immersive media is going to become more and more important in the future. And with immersive media, we also need something for immersive audio. And whether this is going to be Dolby Atmos or MPEG H or something else doesn't really make that much difference. The workflows are pretty much similar and that essentially means that anything that we do with Dolby Atmos now will certainly have relevance for anything that we're going to do in the future. So let's use Dolby Atmos because that's what we have here and uh, let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to drop an instance of the Fiedler Audio Dolby Atmos Composer onto our master bus. Uh, and this will open up the Dolby Atmos Composer, which will serve as the main hub for everything that we're going to do with Dolby Atmos. Now, a um, couple of people have reached out to me and asked me why we're actually using the Dolby Atmos Composer. Wouldn't it be better to just switch over to a digital audio workstation that has a native uh, Dolby Atmos workflow that works with the official Dolby Atmos renderer? And my answer to that question is, well, you know, kind of it depends, quite frankly. Um, I don't have to tell you that many of us are really emotionally attached to the digital audio workstation. And it's really nice to know that we have a solution where we don't have to switch doors. Uh, we can simply use our tried and true digital audio workstation and just kind of turn everything into Dolby Atmos. And this also helps us in taking old projects and turning them into Dolby Atmos without having to convert them into a different digital audio workstation. So I think uh, that that's one of the main reasons why I prefer the Dolby Atmos Composer. It's just more convenient because we don't have to learn a new digital audio workstation. 
I'm not going to talk too much about how exactly the Adobe Atmos Composer works. I've already done that in two previous videos and I'm going to post links in the description below. I invite you to watch those videos if you want to know the details. But just as a very, very brief refresher uh, that we have is an interface that is very, very similar to the interface of the Adobe Atmos Renderer. It shows us the 128 channels. The first 10 channels are the bad channels and the remaining 118 channels are the object channels. And the trick now is to route um, the tracks that we have into objects and uh, into the bed, depending on what you want to do with that, and then essentially move them around in three-dimensional space in order to get an immersive experience. Now, if I play the audio now, I'm not going to hear anything. In order to actually hear something, what I need to do is I need to first route the audio into the Dolby Atmos Composer, and this is done through the Dolby Atmos Beam plugin. So what I would need to do now is I would need to add a Dolby Atmos Beam plugin to each individual track that I want to route into the Dolby Atmos Composer. So let's just do that for the first one. Um, so for the drums here, so I'm going to drop one here. And uh, as soon as I drop that Beam plugin, you see in the Dolby Atmos Composer that it has recognized that Beam plugin and it is connected. And that essentially means that the audio is now routed from the drum track into the Dolby Atmos Composer. So if we play that now, we should actually hear the drums. Now, a lot of people have reached out to me at that point and said, Michael, I now have a problem because I've dropped the Atmos Beam plugin onto my track and I now suddenly can no longer control the uh, gain with the fader. So if I'm going into the mixer here and I'm just playing that and I'm moving the fader here, it's not going to have any effect on the, on the output. Let's just put that back here. And the reason for that is fairly obvious because uh, what the Beam plugin really is doing is it taking the audio and, and routing it into the Dolby Atmos Composer and that means that that audio actually never reaches the fader. And for some, this is an issue. So what do, what do I do? How do I get the fader back? And the answer to that question depends on your digital audio workstation. If you're working with a digital audio workstation that has so-called post-fader inserts, you can simply put the beam plugin onto a post-fader insert and that will take care of the problem because then the fader sits before the beam plugin and you can use the fader in order to control the gain. If you're working with a digital audio workstation that does not have post-fader inserts, like Ableton, for example, what we can do is we can achieve the same effect with some creative routing. So let's just uh, see how we can do that in Ableton. Now, there are actually two ways how we can do that in Ableton in order to see that. Let me just click those windows away. Um, what we really need to do is we just need to take the Dolby Atmos Beam plugin and put it somewhere where it's after the fader of that track. And there are two ways to achieve that. The first one would be to simply uh, group the drum track into a uh, into a group and then essentially put the beam plugin into the group, into the parent track instead of uh, into the track itself. That would allow us to use the fader in the individual track uh, in order to control the gain and the audio will then be sent from the parent into the Dolby Atmos Composer. But this might get a little unwieldy because then you have a lot of groups and it quite frankly depends a lot on what type of workflow you're using. I'm going to do it differently here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an additional audio track and let me just rename that audio track into drum beam. And uh, I'm going to use that in order to beam the audio into the Dolby Atmos Composer. So instead of putting the Dolby Atmos uh, beam plugin onto the track itself, so let me just delete it here. I'm going to put it onto the um, beam drum beam track, and then I'm going to route the audio from the drum track into the beam track. So in order to do that, I'm going to select here in the audio from the drum track and uh, then I also need to make sure that I'm not duplicating the signal. So what I uh, need to make sure is that I'm going to switch that from audio to master to sense only. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing here for in the drums track so that uh, essentially the audio is only routed from the drum track into the drum beam track. And there essentially goes into the beam plugin and the beam plugin then sends it to the Dolby Atmos composer. And then I also need to make sure that I'm actually monitoring. So I need to switch monitoring on. And what will happen now is that the audio goes from the drum track into the drum beam track. In the drum beam track sits the beam plugin, the Dolby Atmos beam plugin that then essentially sends it into the Dolby Atmos composer. And if I play that now, I essentially have the same effect. So if I'm opening up the Dolby Atmos Composer, I see the audio coming in at those two channels and I can now control the gain in the way I normally control that. So 
So I'm not going to do the same thing for the remaining four tracks. Uh, so let me just close that and let's just add four additional audio tracks and let's give them the proper names. So this would be drone one beam. Uh, then we have uh, drone two beam. Uh, then, oops. Then we have the synth one beam and the synth two beam. And then I'm going to drop beam plugins onto each of those. Fourth one. And finally, the fifth one. So let me just double check in the Dolby Atmos Composer if uh, it's actually seeing all five. And yes, we have all five in here. So we have drum beam, ground one, drone two, synth one, synth two. Uh, and then I need to kind of change the routing accordingly. So let's just uh, kind of have the audio from drone one. And here have, we have the audio from drone two. And here we have the audio from synth one. And here we have the audio from synth two. Once again, I'm going to switch everything to sense only. And I'm going to turn on monitoring for all four of them. And in order to kind of tidy up my space a little, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group that. Group tracks, here we are. And I'm calling that group beams. And uh, now I essentially have everything tidied up and uh, essentially ready to go. So let's check out if we're actually getting all the audio that we want. Um, so let me open up the composer again and let's just uh, play our audio. And there's one thing that I forgot, so essentially I need to put that into sense only as well. It's going to become important later. But as you can see, essentially I get everything into uh, the Dolby Atmos Composer. Now what I want to do now is I want to turn some of the tracks into objects and some of them I want to keep in the bed because currently everything is routed into the bed and that's not necessarily something that I want because I actually want to play around with the objects a little. Now what I'm going to turn into an object is uh, the drum track the, uh, and the two synth tracks. I'm going to keep the two drone tracks in the, in the Atmos bed and they can do that either from the beam plugin or I can do that from the Composer composer directly. So what I can do here, for example, for the drum, I, I'm going to turn that into an object. As soon as I turn that into an object, uh, it's going to occupy the next of the spots. Uh, in this case, it's 11 and 12. I'm going to do the same thing for the synth, uh, the first one and the second one. And then what I want to do is, because I can, I want to increase the size of the bed. Traditionally, Atmos beds are limited to 7.1.2. However, the Dolby Atmos Composer from Fiddler Audio employs a trick uh, where they use objects as additional channels that make up for the channels that are missing in the 7.1.2 bed. So you can actually use beds uh, of higher channel counts or kind of in, in Fiddler Audio speak, uh, those are called composites. So we can switch the 7.1.2 bed into a, let's do a 9.1.6. Why not? <laughs> we can. And that essentially will then occupy more channels. The idea is that the first 12 channels are the bed channels and then the remaining channels are additional um, objects that uh, that are used instead of the missing uh, channels in the 9.1.6 track. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second beam. And let's just see if we still get audio. So let's move things around a little because at the moment everything is routed into the left and right channel and that quite frankly is a little bit boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the beam plugins and the beam plugins is something that I can actually open up from the composer directly. However, in order to, for that to work nicely, what you need to do in Ableton, you need to go into the options preferences and you need to disable the auto hide uh, function. Um, that makes sure that you can actually can have uh, plugin windows from different tracks open simultaneously. So let's, uh, I've, I've disabled that. Uh, um, once I've disabled that, I can simply click here and that opens up the beam from that particular track. Now, this is the drum track. What, what are we going to do with the drum track? Let, let's just let, maybe move that back a little um, and uh, maybe up just slightly. Um, 
We can also change the distance, but let's just leave it in these positions. That's fine. Uh, let's uh, let's look at the drones. So this is the drone beam. Let's just close that. We don't need that. And the draw the first drone I want to have in the front. So I'm going to move that similar to what I did with the drums. Maybe here into the white speakers or close to the white speakers. Um, and uh, yeah, let's 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 just leave it in the horizontal plane. And then uh, let's do the second drone. The second drone. Let's maybe move that back completely and uh, also up somewhat. And let's maybe change the distance. Let's move that maybe a little bit closer to the to the listener. And uh, then the synth, uh, the first synth. Let's maybe, I don't know, let's maybe make that super wide. And maybe also a little bit up. And then the uh, final one, synth two, which was sort of the, the, the main synth really. Let's let's keep that to the front. So let's maybe, um, let's maybe even move that a little bit closer. And this would probably be the one track that I would quite frankly automate. So if you if you want to get some a little bit more immersive effect that can where you play with the with the position a little, this would actually be the track that I would automate. Maybe kind of move that back as it plays, something like that. Uh, and uh, and then essentially let's see what we get if we play that audio. And I can now see that I have pretty much action on all individual channels. Now it's currently uh, down mixed into binaural, so I hear it in binaural, but uh, it is a fixed binaural, so um, essentially it is uh, sort of limited in the immersion that I'm getting. Now before I go into how to turn it into something that is fully immersive, I first like to add a little bit of information into the LFE channel. I have a very nice kick and it would be nice to have some of the low end in the LFE channel as well. At the moment there's no audio going into the LFE channel and uh, if you watched my video from last week, uh, or kind of the, also the week before that, you know that uh, you need to actually kind of specifically send audio into the LFE channel because the LFE channel in a traditional setting is not really used as something that is akin to a subwoofer. It's really the low frequency effects channel. So it's generally not really used for the purpose that we're using it here. But, you know, kind of uh, we are in, in music production, so it does make sense to kind of just use the LFE channel for that purpose. So let's just send something into the LFE channel. Now, the easiest way to do that in Ableton is to use one of the return tracks for for that purpose and that might be surprising but that's actually going to be very very convenient so what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn the reverb track here i'm going to remove that reverb and i'm going to rename that into uh lfe beam and uh, then i'm going to drop an instance of dolby atmos beam onto that return track and uh, the last thing that I also need to do is I need to uh, also disable the audio into the master. So I'm going to switch that over to sense only as well. And uh, then in order to make sure that I only get the low uh, frequencies, I'm also going to add a EQ. So let me just go into the EQs here, maybe drop an EQ8 and then maybe let's do a low pass filter, something like this, right? So, so we're going to kind of send everything at, uh, that is lower to there into the LFE channel. So let me just double check um, if the uh, beam plugin was recognized by the Dolby Atmos Composer. Yes, it is. So here we have it, the LFE beam. Now currently it is uh, still set to 9.1.6. What we actually want is we want that to become our LFE channel. So let me go back into the Dolby Atmos beam again here in the LF beam, in the LFE return. And what I need to do is I need to, first of all, I'm going to switch it over to mono because I only want to actually have a mono signal obviously in the LFE channel. So this turns that into a mono. And then I can select which of the channels is going to be sent into the LFE. Uh, so I can have only have one because I switched it over to mono. And uh, then I essentially select one and that makes sure that the um, that the uh, audio is now sent into the LFE channel. So let's open up the master again, the composer, and let's see what we get. Now the nice thing by doing it that way is that I now can use the sense function or the uh, the sense in the track in order to send the amount of uh, information that I want into the LFE. So if I'm turning on the send here, I 
I'm getting additional information into into the LFE and I can control that and I can if I want also send signal from other objects into the LFE that way. So this is a very, very convenient way to work with LFE channels in, uh, in Ableton and, and you can do the same thing with pretty much any digital audio workstation. Okay, so far so good, but how are we turning that into something that is fully immersive? Because once again, currently I'm hearing it as a binaural audio that is sort of fixed. So my speaker layout is sort of glued to my head. That's the way I explained it last week. I actually want to have a situation where the system is tracking the position of my head and playing the audio in exactly the way I would experience it in a full 9.1.6 uh, studio environment. And in order to do that, we're going to do the same thing that we did last week. We're going to use a plugin that is called Virtuoso, which is a essentially a binaural renderer that is capable of rendering pretty much any channel configuration into binaural audio. And this is very, very usable in our particular case because, there's a, because it allows us to convert the 9.1.6 signal directly into a binaural signal and in addition to that uh, it allows us to use head tracking in order to do that in a way that is consistent with my position or with, or with the position of my head now in last week's video uh, which was on a mac i used the standalone version of virtuoso because on a mac you have these virtual devices that allow you to route the audio from one application into another and that was very very convenient so what we could essentially do is we could put the external output of the dolby atmos composer to that virtual device and then use that virtual device in order to route the audio into the standalone version of, virt of virtuoso now on windows this is a little bit trickier you could do the same thing um, but in windows for whatever reason routing audio from one application to another especially if it's multi-channel audio seems to be tricky um, but there's one more thing that we can do um, that actually kind of works almost better than what we did last week and that is we can wrap the virtuoso plugin into an instance of reaper and use reroute so let me first prepare Reaper and I'm already seeing the people in the comment section hammering away because I'm now using Reaper in addition to Ableton. And uh, obviously the question is why didn't I start with Reaper to begin with? But uh, see my previous comments, sometimes we just don't want to or we have an older project that we want to convert. However, it is true that if your digital audio workstation is Reaper, you can stay within Reaper and everything that we're doing now with Reaper and Ableton, you could do within your own digital audio workstation. So Reaper is actually an excellent choice for doing what we're doing here. But here I'm going to use Reaper primarily as a vessel in order to hold the Virtuoso plugin. And the reason I'm going to use Reaper is because it has this very nice extension called Reroute that allows us to route multi-channel audio from applications into Reaper directly. Now, if you don't see reroute installed on your system, this is because it doesn't install by default. So when you install Reaper, what you need to do is you need to go into the customization during the installation process, and then you need to tick the reroute box in order to get reroute installed on your system. Uh, but I've done that here, so let's uh, set up Reaper. And uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm simply going to insert a new track. And uh, this track is supposed to be a 16-channel track because we want to have all our 16 channels. We have a 9.1.6 tracks routed into Reaper. And then I'm going to record enable it, and I'm going to switch the input to reroute. Now, during the process, I'm not going to talk because uh, currently my microphone is routed into that. So I'm going to have some feedback if I do that. So let's just kind of uh, record enable and switch input. And that now essentially makes sure that I have the 16 channels that are coming in through reroute routed into our track and in the track uh, i'm simply going to drop an instance of virtuoso so let me just search for virtuoso here we are I'm going to add that and then i'm going to switch it over to um dolby atmos 9.1.6 i'm going to use 9.1.6 b uh, if you want to know why you can watch last week's video and then there's one additional thing that I will need to do, and I'm going to do that right away. Um, once again, if you want to know why I'm doing that, uh, watch last week's video. But the the channels, the way the, the Dolby Atmos Composer sends it out is not in the same order as Virtual also expects it. So what we need to do is we need to route channel 9 to become the left uh, wide speaker. So 9 is essentially coming in at uh, here, uh, 10 is coming in at, at 6. And then we essentially need to move those down. Um, and two, three, four, and uh, the remaining six uh, are fine. 
So this is just a, a little technicality because the order of the channels differs between what Virtuoso expects and what the Dolby Atmos Composer sends out. So this completes my work uh, within Virtuoso. So the next thing I need to do is I need to route the audio from the Dolby Atmos Composer into reroute in order to make sure that the audio actually reaches Reaper and therefore the Virtuoso plugin. And uh, in order to do that, I need to make a couple of adjustments in the uh, Dolby Atmos Composer plugin, in particular in the output settings. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the speakers and I'm going to switch over to 9.1.6 because that's what I want to have. I want to have full 16 speakers, the maximum possible. And the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the headphones. And here's actually a little correction that I need to make. Last week in the Mac video, I kind of said that the behavior here is a little bit different between audio units and VST3. This was actually not correct. What's really happening is that the headphone outputs are added to the speaker output. So if you have 16 outputs from the speakers and then two outputs from the headphones, uh, this makes up a total of 18 outputs and obviously if, if you're only taking in 16 of them then essentially the two headphone outputs don't make any difference however uh, in order to make sure that we conserve uh, processing uh, because panel rendering actually takes a lot of energy a lot of processing power let's just turn that off uh, to make sure that there's no um, CPU kind of required or no CPU wasted on uh, ren rendering binaural audio that we don't use later on in the process. So let's turn that off. And uh, then essentially we need to switch the external output. And the external output here is simply reroute. Um, now, if you don't see reroute here, that means that you have an old version of uh, the Dolby Atmos Composer. Fiedler Audio uh, released an update that made these ASIO drivers av available or accessible. In the, in the initial version, this was not there was a little bug in there and it was not available. So once again, if you don't see that here, uh, just download an update to the Dolby Atmos Composer and you will see that. So uh, let's turn that over to reroute. And that will now move the audio um, through the Dolby Atmos Composer into the external output and it should then reach Reaper. Now there's one additional thing that I need to do it and that is because I now sort of double the output because I have on one end the output sent to reroute to Reaper via, via reroute but at the same time I'm also having the output from Ableton directly. So I just need to make sure that uh, there's no audio going out of Ableton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a utility on the master bus here and just mute that in order to make sure that no audio leaves Ableton. And all the audio is just routed through the Dolby Atmos Composer, through reroute into Reaper, where it kind of hits the Virtuoso plugin and is then converted into binaural. Uh, and let's just see if we get any audio. Now I just want to make sure that I can see both at the same time. So let me just make that maybe a little smaller here. And let's see. And as you can see, uh, the 16 channels are now routed into Reaper. And in Reaper, sort of they reach uh, the Virtuoso plugin. And in the Virtuoso plugin, they are converted into binaural audio. And that by itself is already pretty nice because Virtuoso has a couple of options that we can set. So for example, there are IQs for different headphones and there are certain ambiences that we can choose for different room environments. So it's actually a really nice way to kind of get a binaural rendering. However, what I really want is I want to have something that is fully immersive. So I also want to add head tracking and that's uh, the final step that I need to do. And for that, I'm going to use once again the Superbear Head Tracker. And uh, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing that I did last week. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to add that to my headphones. And as I said last week, this is a little bit fiddly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of disappear for a second. And when I come back, I have that connected to my headphones. And I'm back. I've now attached the head tracker to my headphones. Um, and the last thing I need to do is I need to just make sure that the information that is coming out of the head tracker is also reaching Virtuoso. Uh, and uh, there are really only a couple of steps involved. The first thing is we need to open up the Bridgehead application, and the Bridgehead application comes with the head tracker. And then I obviously also need to connect the head tracker to my computer via USB, so let's just do that. And as soon as I do that, I essentially get the head tracker, this little dummy head. Let's just double click in order to calibrate. Uh, ju let's just make sure that our settings are correct. Uh, one thing that I need to make sure is that the chirality is set correctly. The cable is on the left. This is correct, which means that the uh, 
the dummy head moves in exactly the same way that I'm moving. So that is working exactly the way it's supposed to. And then go into the bridge settings. And in the bridge setting, you need to select the profile APL with Virtuoso. Um, now, if you don't see that in your profile options, download the lat latest version of Bridgehead and you will actually get that. Um, if you still don't see that, there's uh, you can simply add that yourself. And uh, if you need to do that, just watch the video from last week. They actually went through the process how to add that profile yourself. But in this particular case, we can just kind of use the one that is provided to us. Let's just double click again. Now, in last week's video, I pointed out that uh, in my particular setup, the head tracker drifts a little more than it normally does. Um, it's actually fairly stable usually, um, but here it actually drifts a little. And people have asked me why that is the case. And I honestly don't know. I can only assume that it's because I have so many different devices here. So there's a lot of ele electromagnetism around here. And then I also have a, a metal table, which probably doesn't help. And uh, so everything together essentially kind of makes the drift a little more. So if you see me double click the dummy head, um, that is because of the setup here. If I'm moving the same thing to a remote location with my laptop, it actually works perfectly fine. So let's double click again. <laughs> and then we essentially have it have it calibrated. So, uh, and then as one, one final thing, and then in, in Virtuoso, we just need to uh, set Virtuoso to receive the uh, head tracking information. And that is done via the settings. And in the settings, we can simply turn on head tracking. And as soon as I turn on head tracking, it should actually kind of get that information. As I can see, if I'm moving my head, the yaw, pitch, and roll are moving accordingly. And uh, that uh, should be everything that I needed to do. So let's just play our audio. And uh, what you're going to hear now is exactly the same thing that I'm hearing. So if I'm moving my head, uh, it for you, it seems like a panning, but for me, it appears like I'm really in a fully immersive 9.1.6 virtual studio uh, with the audio playing around me. So let's just play that. And that is actually really, really nice. Um, in order to, uh, to kind of uh, explain the experience that I'm having, it is pretty much exactly the same type of experience that you're getting with the, with the AirPod Max in, uh, in Apple Music if you're listening to Dolby Atmos. So it is really at that level of quality. And that essentially means that this makes uh, this a very, very attractive possibility for monitoring Dolby Atmos productions on the go. So this is really everything I wanted to say today. So once again, this, this combination between the Adobe Atmos Composer, the Virtuoso plugin, and the Subaway Head Tracker is really, in my personal opinion, a killer combination. It kind of, it gives you a really, really nice impression of the, of the Adobe Atmos, of the three-dimensional space. It gives you the feeling that you are actually in a 9.1.6 studio environment, and it allows you to produce Adobe Atmos or immersive audio on the go. So if you are on a train, on a plane, in a cafe, you can still do the same thing, and it feels like you are in this 9.1.6 production environment and that is really 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 cool uh, and that i think really democratizes um dolby atmos because once again um, these these plugins are not particularly expensive nothing of the things that i showed you today is particularly expensive so it's really accessible but this is really everything i wanted to talk about today if you have any questions or comments please use the comment section below or join my discord community once again invert link is in the description below and with that being said see you at the next video